Broadcasting News Network here at day two of PDAC. And joining me today is Chantal Skeven, Research Head of Beer and Beal and Co. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Uh, how has the conference been for you so far? It's been really great. I think yesterday we did a lot at the letter writing day and then we have spent some time on the floor just talking with individuals, investors, gold mining companies. So it's always exciting to see what everybody has to see, what they're thinking, where where the kind of the new things are going. Right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about gold to start okay. off with. Now it's obviously doing much better this year than it did for the majority of 2018. I was just kind of wondering what do you think the catalyst behind that is and where do you see the price going for the rest of the year? So in 2018 we really saw at the beginning of the year gold actually did well and then in about March you saw it start to go down and we really think the reason that it started to go down was the change in or the start of the real start of the trade war and when the started to talking about all the tariffs and the US dollar became kind of a safe haven and went up and gold and the US dollar are usually negative correlated so if the US dollar is going up gold goes down and that's really where we think 2018 kind of went way gold went down in 2018 the difference we see this year is that the US dollar we think is going to start its long-term downtrend. We think it's in a long-term downtrend that it's going to start going down again. And you've even seen in some of the things coming out recently about the trade war that they're really looking at um, currency manipulations, kind of putting that part of the agreement between the China US. And that was, you know, one of the reasons we thought even before is that was a big campaign promise of President Trump's was, you know, we're going to devalue the dollar, devalue the dollar, because he actually, you know, that's the way you kind of start to get things back in balance. So that's really where we think the catalyst is, but it's never smooth. Right. It's never a smooth, <laughs> smooth um, transition. So as you know, there's going to be ups and downs in it. So our outlook for this year is we kind of say it's mildly bullish um, a bit as she goes. Um, just because it is going to take some time. So we're looking at an average price of about 1330 for the year, but we do think there's over a 40% probability gold will break 1400 in the second half of the year. Um, and we're talking about it here today, and you mentioned it yesterday in your letter writer presentation mm -hmm. that the US dollar is overvalued and it needs to decline. That's so right. what catalysts need to be in place for that to happen? And do you think this will happen within this year or it's more of a long term? Yeah. So I think it's going to start this year. I think we're looking for it to come down, especially against the Asian currencies um, as part of the trade war agreements, as part of kind of the rebalancing as uh, agreements start to be put into place that some of the gain that it saw last year will start to kind of dissipate a little bit a little bit of um, change into diversity of other currencies into into gold so I think it'll start this year but not be s dramatic so I'm not expecting it to you know have a 30% decrease or anything but it I do think by the end of the year that it will be lower and while we're talking about gold, uh, a big gold news story right now is Barrick's bid for Newmont. I just wanted to get your thought on that, good or bad? Um, so, you know, one of the things is, is that, we were actually talking about this um, with somebody yesterday, is that you have, you know, the companies combine and, you know, to try and make bigger companies so they're more attractive to large investors. But the thing is, is the gold markets itself and the whole um, equity, gold equity markets is so small that even if they all combined, it's still not going to make a huge difference as far as the investor, the large investors being interested in them. So, you know, as, as far as good or bad, I think, you know, anytime you have companies that are, that are larger, um, then, you know, you can get some economies of scale in, in some areas. But as far as you know, really attracting like large asset managers, I think it's still the industry is just not quite big enough. There's only so much gold in the world. <laughs> right, that's true. Yeah. And um, since we were talking about M and A, do you think that is something that might happen within the silver space? Um, you know, we don't cover silver really so much. We pretty much we we love the gold side, and we spend a lot of time on that. So I don't. That's not something that we really cover very closely so 
probably leave that for someone else to answer sure, for you. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, and so uh, I wanted to also ask you, I know that you cover gold. Um, what are some of your top stocks for 2019? What do you think are some like secure investments? Yeah, so that's also another interesting question because we don't pick stocks ever. <laughs> So we are we stick to the gold analysts, and the reason is is because we really believe that if we get the gold price right, if you really understand where the gold price is going, then that's really the underlying one of the underlying fundamentals for the gold um, equities. So we and we most of our clients are gold companies and asset managers and they're you know so the gold companies are their own stocks the asset managers are picking the stocks so we really focus on studying the gold price predicting it forecasting it so yeah so, so if there was one piece of advice that you could give to investors or your clients that are in the gold space right now and they might be kind of teetering either way because they're not quite sure what's going to happen with gold because yeah. of geopolitical issues, how gold was at the end of last year, how it's performing now. What would be some of your advice to them um, to, to, to hold on to gold? What would you say to them? Yeah. So I think there's a couple things um, on that. I think in, just like any investment, it's a longer term investment. So picking the day to day, I mean, Friday was you know, a perfect example of that where all of a sudden it drops, you know, $25 and you're just like not sure on where it's going to go. So I think on the longer, kind of staying with it, it's a little bit longer term investment. And the other thing is, is that I think gold does offer a portfolio diversifier. So if you have equities, so, you know, depending on people, on investors' um, needs and definitely talk to their portfolio manager, but, you know, holding 10 to 15% and their portfolio in gold does give them a bit of a di diversifier. And so that's that's kind of our biggest advice is, you know, keep a little bit of it. And and we kind of joke is because a lot of times gold is negatively correlated to, to equities. We kind of joke is, you know, hold 10 to 15 percent and hope it doesn't go up too much because, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> equity markets come down. But in um, in all reality, you know, it does offer it does offer a value and a asset that other other investments just don't have. Okay. And just going back to your presentation yesterday, mm -hmm. um, you did mention how interest rates uh, they tend to affect gold more long term. That's right. Um, and I know that a lot of people have been talking about the pause uh, mm -hmm. from the Fed hikes. So mm -hmm. how do you do you see the pause just kind of being like a one time effect on gold, or is it going to be further, or is it just kind of investors are reacting to fact that we're pausing it this year versus last year where we had four of them. Right. So I think that the Fed is, so we think this year they are going to be on hold. We don't see them raising interest rates and it's really the long-term real interest rates that affect gold. So if long-term real interest rates go up and again, that's our second factor. So U.S. dollars, number one, interest rates, number two, is that they're also negative correlated. So interest rates go up, gold goes down. We, because of all the debt levels of U.S. governments and individuals, so in Canada, we're really dealing with an individual debt level, um, high debt to income levels, um, U.S., of course, government debt. So we really see kind of that new paradigm where central banks are a little bit um, restricted on how much they can raise interest rates. Because of all that debt, it makes it very difficult for governments and individuals to service it then. So in Canada, you're looking at the housing market. In the U.S., you're really looking at the government. So we think a pause um, for this year, probably even, you know, really slow into next year. But I do, I do think that we are going to just see lower interest rates in general. And you've seen the Fed come out and even say we want inflation to be even higher because we've been so low for so long. And that's definitely a gold, you know, gold positive if they actually do let that inflation run, run higher. And inflation, inflating debt away is a way governments kind of deal with their right. debt many, many times. Okay. So, All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope the rest of the conference is great for you. Great. Thank you for having Thank me. You. It's great talking uh, with you. And once again, I'm Nicole Rashad with the Investing News Network. I'm with Chantel Skeven, uh, Research Head of Muir Beald & Co. on day two of PDAC.